Previously on Goji Center, we witnessed three scenarios where Pacific Rim Jaegers took on three Monsterverse Kaiju. The result? Utter destruction. But there's a lot more to endure. Now, after facing three terrestrial monsters, how would Pacific Rim Jaegers face airborne Monsterverse Titans? Coming up, our Jaeger squadron equipped with all sorts of weaponry will square up against Titanus Rodan, Mothra, and the legendary Monster Zero. Will the Jaegers survive this time, or will there again be carnage? Find out and watch till the end as we witness Pacific Rim Jaegers vs. Monster vs. Titans Part 2. Before we begin putting Jaeger's strategy to the test, let's see if your strategic skills are up to par with the help of our sponsor, King of Avalon. A medieval fantasy mobile strategy game downloaded by 100 million people and available in the App Store and Google Play. In the game, your hometown was destroyed by the Unmelted, a creature who attacks anything warm-blooded. But you possess a dragon egg. Oh yes, and since you're the new lord in town, you're in charge of a ton of things like building your city, dispelling fog, and gathering resources. Resources. But you're at war, so to defend your city and win easily, you must summon and upgrade heroes, win tower defense battles, build and join alliances, and most importantly, raise your dragon to maturity and be sure to use him wisely in battle. In Frost and Flame, Hollywood star Orlando Bloom has joined to help you, giving you a critical edge against your foes. So if you're ready to play, or if you used to play, then it's time to jump back in, because its sixth anniversary is filled with new content and rich rewards. This game's way to exercise your strategic skills makes us think you are really going to like this game. So if you're ready to play, click on the link below or scan this QR code. Multiple Amazon gift cards for new players are available via our download link. Also, don't forget to use this creator code to redeem a limited in-game pack. It's first come, first serve, so hurry for a chance to get it. Stay active and we'll see you in the game. Thanks to King of Avalon for sponsoring this video, and now let's return to the episode. Today, the simulation platforms will be filled with Jaegers ready to combat three titans seen in the film Godzilla King of the Monsters. Note that the way these fights play out will be a lot different than in the previous episode. Why? Because these are all airborne kaiju, creatures with the capability of flight. But not only that, some of these are capable of flying at extremely high speeds, automatically making these scenarios very difficult for the Jaegers to win. But there is some hope for the Jaegers this time. Before we reveal this edge, we must quickly recap the corporal build of these fighting machines. As mentioned previously, the weight of these Jaegers varied a lot depending on which official source you're looking at, but a more accurate figure is around the 7,000 ton mark. To put this into perspective, that's only around 300 to 400 tons short of the weight of the metal framing of the Eiffel Tower. So yes, that's pretty heavy. But compared against these kaiju, well, we have a problem. Fortunately for the Jaegers, two out of the three contestants are much lighter than the kaiju they faced in the previous episode. But will this be enough to pull off their first win? Up next, the Jaegers will face a titan that will pick them apart if not careful. Number 1. Jaegers vs. Rodan in this scenario, our squadron of Jaegers will face a titan infamous for its superb airborne combat abilities, fast speeds, and array of dangerous weapons. In order to have a good idea of the outcome of a fight between these two contestants, we need to compare their builds. On one end, a squadron of Jaegers, each weighing anywhere between six to 7,000 tons and standing at an average height of 230 to 280 feet. Equipped with superheated blade weaponry, maces, guided missiles, and special melee weapons such as the Arc Whip. On the other end, we have Titanus Rodan, a biovolcanic monster with a massive wingspan of 871 feet, but dwarfed by the Jaegers in terms of standing height. Slouched at 154 feet, Rodan could potentially see this reduced if he stands more upright, but not enough to surpass the 280 feet mark. However, as mentioned earlier, Monster vs. Kaiju have a critical edge over any Jaeger. Wait! Titanus Rodan weighs a whopping 39,000 tons. On average, that's approximately five and a half times heavier than any one of these Jaegers, assuming they were all 7,000 tons. This alone will make it very difficult for these robots to body this Titan. 
On the contrary, the fact that Rodan can move at high speeds with this much weight can only spell death for any of these pilots. The factors to look out for would be speed, melee weapons, and terrain compatibility. Let us explain a plausible scenario between our combatants. A squadron of Jaegers stands ready to engage a massive flying kaiju. Given that these Jaegers are terrestrial combatants, the only thing they can do is wait for Rodan to approach them. But knowing Rodan, this kaiju won't just gracefully land in front of them and introduce himself, Rodan will strike to kill. What would this look like? A relatively heavy kaiju like Rodan moving much faster than the speed of sound will have a ton of kinetic energy waiting to be immediately converted into something known as impact energy. We won't bore you with all the math involved, but put simply, if Rodan happens to make contact with either its pointy talons or sharp beak, this only means that the Jaegers would literally, and we mean literally, get pulverized to shreds upon impact, almost as if they were hit by a small meteor. Knowing this, if Rodan just happens to ambush this squadron from the right angle, it is technically possible for Rodan to wipe out most of this squadron in a split second. No matter what weapons these Jaegers possessed, Rodan's dense, heavy build would make these obsolete. Would Rodan be smart enough to attack in such a fashion? Maybe, but it's possible. So how would these Jaegers have a chance? A more effective strategy would be to spread out to avoid getting wiped with one strike like the previous attack, and wait for Rodan to be close enough to the ground for them to deploy weapons such as the Gravity Sling, and hopefully hold down Rodan waiting for another Jaeger to approach with a bladed weapon and strike him on some vital organ. But even this is difficult. We have seen Rodan impaled before, so there is no guarantee that this strike might even be effective. Rodan wouldn't be a pushover on land either. This beak's shape and size would easily be able to grab onto any of these Jaeger's limbs and hack them right off. But having said this, the possibilities of Rodan engaging in a purely terrestrial fight is quite low, and would probably resort on cycle charges to wipe out this entire squadron, making defeating Rodan an almost impossible feat. This is without mentioning its thunderclap or cyclonic drift abilities, both being able to disorient and create a shockwave capable of damaging surrounding crafts. Could these Jaegers fight in the sky? Not quite. What you see here are just simple means of transporting Jaegers, which would make them even more prone to getting ambushed in the air. The next kaiju on this list fights differently and relies on other interesting sorts of weapons. Number 2. Jaegers vs. Mothra in this scenario, humanity finally found a way to piss off Mothra, and now the Queen of the Monsters turns against the human race and decides that they too must perish. But can humanity hold her off? There are two ways to handle this, and for this, we must know a little bit of Mothra's life cycle. Every incarnation of Mothra begins with an egg. Once hatched, a larva will emerge, but this one fights back. Equipped with some considerable sized mandibles and a silk web that can be fired from its mouth and trap small to medium sized opponents. But how does this measure up against a Jaeger? Well, unfortunately for the larva, these can stand more than five times her height. Silk attacks from this smaller larva will not be enough to ensnare a 280 foot tall Jaeger, meaning that a successful war against Mothra would have to be waged early. This way, humanity will have a better chance at defeating this kaiju early on before it evolves into its next winged and more dangerous form. But what if humanity failed to find this egg early and now has to face off against a more mature Mothra? Well, here is where things get a little more interesting. Although Mothra is a very strong kaiju, this matchup is actually a little more evenly matched than the previous ones we have seen. First off, let's begin by mentioning that Mothra is not that much bigger than its larva form, measuring up to a measly 52 feet in height. We aren't completely sure about its weight, but given that its body is only a fraction of the size of Rodan's, we can guess that it's much less than 39,000 tons perhaps equal or less than the weight of these Jaegers, without accounting for the weight of the wings, meaning that for this particular matchup, melee weaponry will now be a determining factor in the outcome of the fight, along with corporal builds and maneuverability. 
In this particular matchup, Titanus Masura will no longer have the vast weight advantage seen in the previous matchups, meaning that Mothra will now have to think critically if it even thinks about standing a chance against a squadron of Jaegers. There are two weapons that Mothra possesses that could give pause to these machines. One is its silk attack ability. In a previous face-off video, we discussed that this silk is so strong given that this material is proportionally stronger than steel. What does this mean for our Jaegers? This means that a combatant without bladed weaponry would easily be ensnared or even handicapped by the silk attack. Other better equipped Jaegers, such as the Saber Athena for instance, could use her ionic twin blades to cut right through this silk, allowing it to continue fighting. Bladed weaponry is something to look out for in Mothra's case. Given that her wings are relatively thin, one well-placed strike at any of her winged appendages would render her flightless and at the mercy of a much taller Jaeger. That is if Mothra even decides to fly this low. Another method of attack that is available to Mothra is plunge diving from high altitudes and leveraging her close range weapons such as her stinger and spiked legs to inflict damage right on the Jaeger's command center, or head, where the pilots are housed. Knowing this, the likelihood of Mothra defeating a single Jaeger is plausible, but under very specific circumstances. One wrong, careless move could spell defeat for the Queen of the Monsters. This is without mentioning that this smaller kaiju could very well be vulnerable to missile weaponry, potentially granting the Jaeger program its first win against the MonsterVerse plethora of titans. But now the Jaeger squad will have to look out and hold on tight because they will be about to combat the most difficult challenge yet. Number 3, Jaegers vs Ghidorah. After a shaky outcome against Mothra, the Jaeger program will now have to face the largest and perhaps most malevolent kaiju seen in the MonsterVerse, Monster Zero. Just standing in front of this titan would be an extremely terrifying experience. Simply put, this titan measures 521 feet in height, completely dwarfing the largest members of this Jaeger squadron. The smaller ones? Well, it's almost as if they're not even there. In the real world, animals who are about to engage in combat do anything they can to appear bigger than they actually are, in an attempt to further intimidate their opponent. Here, Ghidorah doesn't even have to do this, but since this guy loves inflicting terror on its adversary, we can imagine a scenario where Ghidorah stands tall and arrogantly challenges our squadron of Jaegers, knowing very well that it might win this fight. But will it? Another thing to touch on is the fact that this kaiju is also the heaviest in the MonsterVerse, weighing up to a massive 141,000 tons, outweighing Godzilla, Kong, Behemoth, Rodan, everyone. Or about the weight of 20 large Jaegers. Note that unlike Rodan or Mothra, this guy can actually fight well on land. The factors to look out for are corporal builds, mobility, and special weapons and terrain. If you know anything about Monster Zero, you'll realize that this is no longer a fight. This is an execution, one which will be hard to escape from. But our Jaegers here have no choice but to fight their way out of this scenario. To understand what could potentially happen to these Jaegers during a confrontation, let's quickly run over some of the many weapons that this Titan possesses. 1. A three-headed body, each self-conscious and capable of making their own decisions, with sharp teeth capable of shredding and pulling anything apart with collaborative effort. Any unlucky Jaeger to get caught by any of these three heads would only find itself dismembered limb from limb. Now you may think just because these are robots, the pilots may remain unharmed. While true, whatever corporal damage that is inflicted on these Jaegers is felt to some degree by the pilots, meaning that these guys will suffer intense pain. And this also goes for the methods seen in the previous episode. <laughs> We should also mention this titan's special abilities. For starters, a fight with this monster will probably take place in a Category 6 hurricane, with strong winds, restless lightning strikes, tornadoes, you name it. Ghidorah brings with him the apocalypse. 
In addition to this, this guy can fire its infamous gravity beam from all three of its mouths directly into one target, causing severe burn damage, disintegrating any smaller creatures, and in this Jaeger's case, inflict superheated damage and potentially fry their circuits, rendering these things useless. But does Ghidorah have to fire on these individually? No. If near a power source, Ghidorah could absorb this energy and amplify it, causing a chain lightning reaction capable of affecting all surrounding craft, critically damaging a large number of these at once. This may sound hopeless for the Jaegers, but you've seen nothing. An airborne Ghidorah would be much more lethal, as seen before with Rodan. A 141,000 ton Titan flying at 630 miles per hour would generate enough impact force to demolish anything under its feet. Will Ghidorah suffer from any melee damage? Perhaps, but as seen in the previous episode, these kaiju are in a league of their own in density and weight, meaning that any weapon strike would find it harder to penetrate. But not only that, these Jaegers are fighting Ghidorah. You know, the kaiju that can regenerate in seconds? Out of all of the Jaeger vs. Titan matchups, this one would have potentially been the most difficult to survive from. Not only because of its melee capabilities, but because running away from this guy is almost impossible. Are there any other Monster vs. Kaiju that the Jaegers could actually defeat? Do you think the Kaiju from Pacific Rim can stand a chance against any of these Titans? Let us know in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe, smack that like button, and be on the lookout for more Kaiju Carnage. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next episode.